Carolyn Doobie here. What am I up to today? Well, today I'm going to be answering a question that I get frequently, which is, how do I play? People see me play, they want to be able to play, but they don't know how. How do you relearn how to play? We all knew how to do it as kids, so we're all capable of it. But as we turn into adults, we kind of lose that ability to play. Well, there is a way to get that play back. Never fear. I have learned how to do it. I taught myself how to bring that playfulness back to what I'm doing so that when I'm creating, there's joy, there's freedom, there's happiness. And there are also a few other side benefits. Like I get a lot more relaxation from it because it helps chase away the stress of the day. I also have found that it helps me process feelings. And sometimes those feelings aren't always the nicest or the greatest or the most wonderful but it gives me a place to process them out. So I relearned how to play once I was an adult. And there were a couple of things that I wanted to know while I was relearning how to play. I wanted to know exactly what supplies I needed to use. I wanted to know exactly how much time I needed to play. I wanted to know exactly what project I was gonna make. And I wanted to know exactly how it was supposed to feel. Well, there's no exact way to play. Do you have five minutes? Wonderful. Do you have 30 minutes? Wonderful. Whatever time you have, you can make that work for play. Well, what supplies do you need for play? Whatever you've got on hand. There's no right supply for play. It's whatever you've got. How are you supposed to feel when you're playing? Well, that depends on you and what you're doing. Sometimes when I'm playing, I have lots of happy, amazing feelings and I'm just full of energy. And sometimes when I play, it's very calming and soothing, almost meditative. And sometimes when I play, it's very emotional because I'm processing out a bunch of feelings. There's no exact way you're supposed to feel. And what exact project do you need to make? Well, here's the thing about play. It doesn't have to have a project. As a matter of fact, rarely does my play have a project in mind when I start. If I happen to make a project in the end and get something finished, I call that a bonus. For play, it doesn't have to be about a project. Well, I said I would share with you how you can recapture that ability to play. And that's what I'm gonna be doing in all of 2016 with the Let's Play Link Party. What's gonna happen is each month there's a theme or a challenge, and then each week on Tuesday, I'm gonna share with you a different take or interpretation of that. Now these challenges, these themes, they weren't written by attorneys. As a matter of fact, I don't need any of those inner attorneys. And for those of you that have taken my free workshop, Permission to Play, you know what I mean about those inner attorneys. I am going to just interpret it however I feel like it at that moment. There's no right way, there's no wrong way to do this. And I'm going to share with you though how it helps me play. And this month, the theme is using something that would be thrown away. Now, does that mean that you'd throw it away? Does it mean that somebody else would throw it away? Does it mean that you have thrown it away? Does it mean that you... It doesn't matter. However you want to interpret it, All that's, that's the challenge there, is use something that would have been thrown away. Now, here's the thing about play. Sometimes I set out to play and do something particular, and sometimes the play takes me somewhere else. So when you're playing, if you don't use this challenge or this theme, guess what? It's still play, and we'd still love to see it because I strongly believe that play is contagious. And it's the best kind of contagious because it's a way to enjoy life. It's a way to reduce stress. It's just, life is so much better when there's play in it. So if you want to help spread that, be contagious about the play. I hope you'll share what you create with us in the weekly link party over at acolorfuljourney.com. Now, along with all this how to play, there's also a chance to win a $50 gift certificate. So how do you get entered in the giveaway? Well, each month, random.org is going to pick one person randomly, hence random.org, to get the $50 gift certificate, which is to Dick Blick this month. And by the way, if you're international, U.S., whatever you are, it's open to everyone everywhere. Um, but to get entered, if you link up what you're playing with, now remember it could be this month's theme or it could be anything that you're creating and playing with. If you link that up at the, in the link party, then you get not only one chance, but you get a bonus entry into the giveaway. And you can also get entered by leaving a comment on that blog post telling what you enjoy about something that someone has shared in the link party. Now, of course, you can find out more about play, why I think it's important, as well as the details about getting entered. If you're new to link parties and you don't know how they work or what the etiquette is with them, head on over there, check them out. I have got all of that information there for you. And of course, I hope you'll be sharing what you play with. So what did I do for the very first Let's Play of 2016? 
I went and grabbed some envelopes that a lot of people would normally throw away, junk mail envelopes. I think they're somewhere from bills that didn't get mailed, that kind of thing. And I decided to play on those. And the reason why I did this is I had to find a way to get the pressure off of me. Whenever I feel a lot of pressure, play doesn't really happen. One of the things that was going on in my head before I started playing was I have another project that I'm working on and it has to be finished and it has a deadline. I was finding myself getting locked up, trying to make it perfect, make it just right. And to get myself out of that kind of thinking, I turned to the play. And that's by grabbing something that I would have thrown away, which is the junk mail envelopes. I knew that I couldn't ruin these. There was no way I could do this any harm because it's trash. How can I ruin something that was going to be trash? So here are the envelopes that I used. A lot of people would throw these envelopes away, but I keep them because I know it's a great place for me to play. Now, I love dressing up envelopes. It's just a lot of fun. Sometimes I send them to people, sometimes I don't, because you know what? Play doesn't have to have a project in mind. Now, the stencil that I'm gonna use to put a bunch of mail art type themed words on it is called Mixed Media Mail, and it's from Stencil Girl. And I'm just gonna pick out the words that I want, and I'm gonna stencil them on in different places. Now with a stencil like this, where there are lots of words all over it, if I use a big old brush, I have to actually be careful with where I'm placing the brush because it will bump into things that I didn't want it to. Or I might have to mask things off by putting some tape or some paper over it so I only stencil the words that I want. And that, I gotta tell you, is just more work than I'm willing to put into things some days. So that's where the cosmetic sponge is so handy. I find it much, much easier to control exactly where something is going when I'm using a cosmetic sponge. Now the paint that I'm using is just plain old black acrylic paint. The less paint that I use, the drier it is, the crisper my stenciling is. If you ever see some paint run underneath it, that's because I had more paint on it on that cosmetic sponge, it was juicier, wetter. And so, and by the way, sometimes I really love that runny wet look. And so I can kind of pick and choose what kind of look I wanna get with something. Now you can see there, I had a little bit of paint go off the edge. Is that the end of the world? Absolutely not. This is play. You've got to remember in play, there's no right and wrong. Now, remember what I said about using a lot of liquid on that cosmetic sponge makes things messier? Well, what I'm going to do with this one is I am stenciling the word ideas on here. Part of it's on the plastic. And you're going to see that, wow, paint and plastic, it kind of doesn't always work that well together. But that is totally why I picked this next word to put on that envelope, the big old oops, because it was an outstanding opportunity presenting suddenly. So as I'm doing this, you probably aren't going to be surprised by what I'm about to say. I'm not planning this. I'm not thinking very hard about it. I am absolutely following impulses. Whatever words call out to me, whatever way it sort of says to me to put it on the envelope, I'm just going to put it that way. And the trick is for me to be able to do this is for me to not worry about ruining it. Because guess what? It's junk mail. If I ruin one of these envelopes, I have got a great big stack. I can just grab another one. There's absolutely no pressure. And taking that pressure off is one of the first things that I learned to do that allowed me to play. To just let loose and see where it takes me. And since there are no rules when I play, if I want to stencil a word over and over again, I can. I'm going to put this word urgent three times down the side of this because I really like how that looks, having a trio of that word. So I'm going to keep adding more to these envelopes until I decide that I want to stop or I run out of time because sometimes I only have a little bit of time for play. So whenever my time runs out, then I'm going to stop and I am going to let these completely dry before I add some color to them. Well, now it's time to get some color on these because if you've seen many of my videos, you know this wasn't gonna stay black and white. And what I'm doing is using some heavy bodied paint on here. I'm just using a small amount of it and I'm putting it directly onto that mini blade. And the reason why I'm doing that, is there a great big philosophical reason? Is it incredible for the technique? No, I just don't like cleaning brushes. Now with the yellow, you're about to see an oops. I got some of the yellow onto the plastic, so I just wiped it off with my finger. A little bit of it smudged on the envelope by accident, and then I decided to just embrace that and call it an oops, and I started smearing what was left on my finger on that envelope. That envelope that I had that yellow smear on, it's gonna look different than all the others probably by the end. And of course, letting myself say oops when I make what I used to call a mistake by just saying it is an outstanding opportunity presenting suddenly, that definitely helps me play.
Like I said, that one envelope that had the oops on it, it's probably going to become my favorite because, well, you'll see what happens to that envelope. Now, play doesn't always go as planned, and that's what an oops is, something that I didn't plan. In this case, it is turning that envelope into my cleanup paper, the place where I wipe off the blade or my fingers whenever there's extra paint on them, that kind of thing. That envelope is catching all of that for me now, and that's why that one is going to look more colorful and different from the others. So let's recap all the different ways that were covered in this video about how you can recapture or relearn how to play. Number one is by using something that would have been thrown away. That takes the pressure off when you're using something that would have been trash because what's the worst thing that's going to happen to it, right? The other thing is by saying oops, by letting yourself say, instead of saying, oh, that's a mistake, I failed, it's no good, just say oops, it's an outstanding opportunity presenting suddenly. And those are two of the things that you can do to help yourself play. So I'm going to finish these up by adding little bits of color here and there. And that very last envelope, the one that's taken the lion's share of the color smears, I am going to embrace that and add even more color to that one because, frankly, you just can't have too much color, in my opinion. But now you've seen my play, I want to see yours, and I know other people do too. So head on over to the blog at acolorfuljourney.com and join in, link up, share what you're creating with the Let's Play Link Party and get entered to win that $50 gift certificate to Dick Blick. Thanks for being a part of this colorful journey.